Hello everybody and welcome to the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. This video is in response to a question posted at the Painter Factory. Uh, the question is concerning watercolor auto painting in X3. And Neil asks, I am sure I must be missing something very obvious, but I need help. I use auto painting with my photographs for a start and then finish my hand. All the brushes that I've tried, and that's quite a few, work fine with the exception of the watercolor group. I've tried all three types of the watercolor brushes, and when I auto paint, they lay down a layer that is virtually black or at least so dark that it's totally unusable. So with everything else working just fine, I know I must be missing some simple step. I have tried reading the manual and looking at the available YouTube vids all to no avail. So I would appreciate any insight some can give me. Thanks very much, Neil. Okay, well, Neil, let's go over to Painter and see what we can figure out. And by the way, you're not missing something simple. This is what I would call advanced auto painting. <laughs> okay, so what I have here is a picture of a ginger lily, uh, lily created by Karen Boniker. I've used this photograph many times for watercolor uh, tutorials because uh, of the fact that it has so much wonderful white space that we can work with. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is prepare this uh, image to get ready for uh, auto painting. And to do that, the first thing I want to do is create a clone. So I'm going to come over to File, and I normally would go to Quick Clone to create a clone. But in this case, I'm going to use just plain old clone. Once my clone image pops up, I can close my original. And now I have my clone showing. Now, the reason I did this this way is because I wanted this image to be in uh, my clone. If I had done quick clone, the way I have it set up is it would wipe the image away and I would just have a blank canvas. But I want to be able to use this image later for something else. So the first thing I'm going to do with this image is I'm going to go control A and I'm going to make sure that I'm on my layer adjuster tool and I'm going to click in the center of this uh, image. And when I do that, it's going to copy the image to a layer of its own and leave the canvas layer blank. And that's what I want. I want this image available to me, but not on the canvas layer. So I'm going to turn the eye off and I'm going to lock the layer. Okay, so now it's protected and I'm going to come back to the canvas layer. Now, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and save this image. So I'm going to come over and go File, Save As, and I'm going to save it as Advanced Auto Painting. I've done this a couple of times now, so <laughs> I've got this already ready. And it, yes, I want to replace it. Okay, so now I've got my a new Advanced Auto Painting <laughs> image done. All right, so now the next thing that I want to do to in preparation is I want to create a couple of channels. And I'll explain why and all that, or you'll see why as we go. I'm not going to talk a lot about channels or how things that you do with them. If, we, if I did that, the video would just take way too long. So I'm, to make a channel, I'm going to come over to the Channels panel. And I'm going to click on the Option menu, and I'm going to select New From, okay? And up pops a New From uh, dialog. Now, I have under this drop-down several options that I can use, and the one I want is Original Luminance. And what that means, it's going to give me a new channel that's based on the luminance of the original image or the clone source. Okay, and so I say OK, and there's my channel called Alpha Channel, and it's based on the original source. Now I'm going to right click this um, channel, I'm going to click on Channel Attributes, and I'm going to change the name of the channel to Original. I'm doing that because I'm going to have a number of channels and I want to be able to keep them straight. Now, if I turn off the visibility eye on the RGB channel, 
then you'll see that it's uh, a grayscale image of the original source. Now, I want a more contrasty version of this, or a higher contrast version of this. So I right-click again on the original channel, and I click on Duplicate. And the Duplicate Channel window opens up, and I want to select, out of the possibilities, I want to select New, and it will make a new channel based on that original. Now again, I'm going to turn off the visibility eye of the original and the RGB channel, and that shows Alpha 2. I'm going to go down here and make sure that Alpha 2 is highlighted. And then I'm going to come up to Effects, Tonal Control, Brightness Contrast. Because remember I said I wanted a high contrast. So I'm going to take my contrast all the way up, and that gives me a very high contrast. <laughs> channel. But I don't want to wash out uh, this area completely. I want to be able to see a little bit of variation of value in the petals of the flower. So I'm going to drop the uh, brightness down a bit. And there we go. We've got some delineation or some value changes inside of the petals. And that's what I want. So I apply. And now I'm going to right click this channel click on channel attributes and I'll change the name of this channel to high contrast and say okay now once I'm finished I want to come back up to the RGB channel and make sure that both icons of the original and high contrast channels are closed and I come back to layers and I'm still on my uh, canvas which is where I should be now I want another source here um, I don't want to use just the source that I have, so I'm going to, in the Clone Source panel, we have this Show Source Image, and that will bring up an, a, an image that is, uh, it'll bring up the Ginger Lily Source, and I can make changes to it and then save it as a new source image, um, Clone Source, inside of the Clone Source panel. So let's do that. We click on Show Source Image, and up pops the image. I'm going to go over to Underpainting, which, oh shoot, I <laughs> pulled it out. Underpainting, which is normally found in the Window, Auto Painting, Underpainting. But I use it so much that I just keep it over here. And I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to go to the Photo Enhance. I'm going to drop down the menu and come down to saturate and then I'm going to apply to underpainting and that saturated the image and gives me a little bit more color now at this point I'm not going to use the underpainting panel anymore I don't think so I I was going to delete it but I can just move it back over here by just dragging it right over and putting it where it's supposed to be and there we go okay uh, so now all I need to do is close this source image, and when I close the image, up pops a clone source image dialog box, and I have three options. I can create a new clone source, I can update a current clone source, or I can discard this clone source. And as I said, I wanted to make a new one, so I have my Create New Clone Source um, button highlighted, and I say OK. Ta -da! And now I have a new clone source. And I can come up to the option button of the clone source panel and click on rename source and I can rename it uh, saturated. So it's the ginger lily source saturated. Now I could have also right clicked on the image and click on rename resource as well. Okay, so now I think I have everything done to start my cloning process. Now, what Neil had said and others had said that the watercolor uh, paint builds to black or builds very dark to make it almost uh, unusable. And that's true, especially if you're water, uh, doing uh, watercolor. And But there's no reason why... Let's go up to... 
the brushes. There no, there's no reason why you can't change the way that works some. For instance, if I were working with this dry on dry paper, which is a real watercolor brush, the opacity of it is 60%. And if I do an auto painting of it, I'm going to get something that's quite black. So if I reduce the opacity, then I would get something that's a lot lighter. So that's the first thing that we can use to uh, help us with our auto painting with watercolor. The other thing is to use a channel. Now, I can also go into the watercolor brushes and change uh, things in the real watercolor panel. Um, like the settling rate, uh, different things that would lessen uh, the ability of the brush to go all the way to black. But that gets pretty complex. So I want to keep this simple and just work with the opacity slider and what will and, and how channels will help us. Okay, so that being said, I'm going to pick a br well first let's go to uh, auto painting. And we want to click on Smart Stroke and Smart Settings. Uh, you don't really have to do this. You can create uh, different strokes and use these sliders. This is just simple for me right now to use Smart Stroke and Smart Settings. Then I'm going to go to my real watercolors. And I'm going to pick a brush called Real Wet Damp Texture. And it's at 100% opacity, but this brush lightens considerably. See, the settling rate is only 35%, and the weight's only 25%, so it's going to get much, much lighter. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go Select, Load Selection, and I'm going to load my High Contrast Selection. Now, you can see that we have Marching Ants. Here, Remember, the channel is, uh, I don't know if I said this earlier, but a channel is nothing more than a storage device for selections. So that, that grayscale that we looked at earlier was really a selection. And it's a selection of pixels that each have been assigned uh, a value between 0 and 356. So inside of this, uh, these marching ants, there's uh, some pixels that have been selected, but they also go outside here. In, in other words, because it's grayscale, all of the pixels are somehow or another being affected. Now, I want to work mainly in the background. So if I want to work mainly in the background, I want to invert this channel. I'm going to go up to Select, Invert Selection, and now what you see is the marching ants are around the outside edge. That's telling me that the most important part is from the outside edge into this line. Now there'll be some stuff in the center, but not as much. Most of it's going to be out here on this line. Okay, I've got my ginger lily source selected. I want to make sure my brush is on clone color. I've got my smart stroke, smart settings set up. I've decided on the brush, and I'm not changing the opacity of this brush. And I click Paint. And there we go. We start getting an auto painting. Now, as you see, like I said, the most important part of this is the area outside of that, or, you know, between the marching ants on the outside edge and the uh, marching ants on the inside. And I hardly get much in that white area. And because this brush uh, diffuses to a much lighter color, I'm not going to get that really strong black. Now you want to wait till it finishes diffusing before you do anything else. And as long as that mar those marching ants are um, blinking, like you see, then the brush is still diffusing. When it finally stops blinking, the brush will not be diffusing anymore. And I kind of like the way this brush works. It gives you some nice sort of textures. It has a kind of a uh, watercolor look to it. Excuse me, I was taking a sip of coffee. Okay, so the the diffusion is finished now because the marching ants are uh, not blinking anymore. Okay, 
Uh, remember I said this was a path-based uh, selection, and I, I mean a pixel-based selection. I want to change it to a path-based. Path-based means that it would change it to really pretty much black and white. So to do that, I want to come up to Select, and I'm going to click on Transform Selection. And that automatically changes this to a path-based selection. And now I want to go up to Select again, and I want to save the selection. It's the background, mainly, that we're dealing with here. So I'm going to save it as Background Transform and say OK. All right, so now we've got that saved. And where does it get saved? It gets saved in the channels. So see, we have our original, our high contrast, and our background, background tra uh, transform. Come back over here. Now that I've gotten that done, I'm going to go up to Select again and invert the selection. So now what I've got selected is pretty much just the stuff inside of here. And notice how this paint had gone over the edge. I don't want that to be there. I want to have a nice crisp edge here. So by changing to just changing this to a path-based selection and inverting it so that I'm in the opposite area that I originally painted in, I can, if I'm on a Mac, hit delete, or if I'm on a PC, hit backspace. And what's going to happen is it will uh, or it does, delete that extra stuff that's there. Now, it's much better if you're on the, uh, let's go up to select. We're going to go load selection. We're going to load background transform again. And we're going to uh, select invert selection. Notice that it didn't really take that off. That was because I was not on the brushes or on layer adjuster. I was in this selection adjuster and it just doesn't let it work. So now that I'm in the right place, I can hit backspace. I'm on a PC, but so backspace for me or delete for the Mac. And you'll get this, you know, indication that it's actually working. And when it finishes, you'll see this real nice crisp line that's going around here. Now, sometimes that can be too crisp and not uh, very attractive. But in this situation, we're going to do a, a several things that will make it okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is lock that channel, and I'm going to add by clicking on this new layer. I'm going to click it, hold it down, and select a new watercolor layer. Now, I know you can't see that, but right below the new layer uh, is new watercolor layer. So now I have a new watercolor layer to work on, and I'm interested in working on the inside at this point. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to Select, and I'm going to go Load Selection, and this time I'm going to load, again, the high contrast and say OK. Now this time we worked on the background before, so now I'm more interested in what happens in the center part. It will spill over some into the background, but most of it's going to happen in the center part. I'm going to go to a different brush, and I think we're going to go to uh, Light Fringe goes really light, too. So does Light Bristle. Let's see. Light Fringe, uh, Settling Rates 100. See, its weight's only 25%, so it's going to go pretty light as well. But its opacity's at 100%, which would be pretty strong. So I'm going to take that opacity and I'm going to drop it to about 65%. Okay. And then I'm going to make sure that it's on clone color. I'm on my ginger lily source satura saturated. And everything is set. I can click play for auto uh, painting. And as you can see, it begins to auto paint. And again, let it go until it's finished. And until it, sometimes you can get a, even a white screen. It looks like the the um, image has 
uh, crashed on you, but it hadn't. Sometimes it'll close like that, and all you have to do is open it back up. All right, so it finished. It's just real light here, and it's finally diffused because the um, uh, marching ants are not blinking anymore. And this is real pale, but that's okay. Uh, I think this is exactly what I want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to select. Um, I'm going to load selection and I'm going to load background transform again. Now this time I want to delete anything that might be out here that got painted. And I'm on, you know, a layer. I'm not on that layer that has all the background painting on it. We can't even see hardly what we've painted in the center. So I don't need to to invert this at all. I just need to hit backspace uh, for a PC or delete for a Mac. And I gotta find my backscape, backspace key. <laughs> and I'll click on backspace and there. It cleaned up the stuff that was outside and left the stuff that was inside. So we've got this real subtle stuff going on on the inside there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is lock this layer, and I'm going to add a regular layer to uh, the mix now. And this time, I'm going to go over to Restoration. Now, Restoration, oh shoot, pulled it out. Restoration is also found under Window, Auto Painting Panels, Restoration. And the reason I went there is I'm going to get this soft edged cloner. Now, this is not a watercolor cloner, and what it does is it brings back the photograph, um, or some of the photograph. And I'm going to bring back some of it, but I'm going to do it in sort of a light way, so it's not real obvious. Now, I just turned on the toggle tracing paper in the clone source, so I could see my image a little better. And I'm going to make it much lighter, so I can... I can know where I want to bring back the information, but I want to be able to still see what I want to be able to see what I'm bringing back. So if I come here and just lightly paint, I'm going to be bringing back some of that center part of the flower. I don't want to bring back too much of it, but just enough so that we know what it is and it looks stronger now than it really is because I've got the tracing paper on. And the other thing I want to do is I want to kind of come over some of these areas that have crisp lines or that, you know, just darken some of the stuff in the center so that it's obvious what it is. We can tell, in other words, we can tell there's some petals in here. So I want this kind of stuff. I don't want to do all of it, but just where there's, you know, some sharp lines. You don't want to make it, you want to do this real subtle, like... See, that comes around there. Now we brought that out. Bring this one out a little bit. There's one right in here that goes underneath this one, so we'll kind of indicate that it's there. We'll give a little darkness to this, a little darkness to this over here. I'm not, and that's probably enough. Let's turn the eye off. Yeah, see, now we've got just a little more indication of what's going on there. Okay, so now I'm going to lock this layer. And remember that um, layer up here at the top that I wanted to do something with? Well, I'm going to open that back up, and I'm going to take the lock off, and I'm going to go up to Effects, Surface Control. Uh, oops, I'm not on the layer. Make sure you're on the layer. Go up to Effects, Surface Control, Sketch. Now, 
<clears throat> we've got some sliders here, and I'm going to move this around till I see, you know, see something that could be indicated by the drawing that this little uh, stamen here, I want to show that. So I'm going to take my threshold, low threshold down some, and that will allow me to get more line here. Now, once I've taken that down, I'm going to increase the sensitivity a pretty good bit because see the line is coming back now and I'm getting a fairly good line all the way around. But I don't want all of this texture in here, this spottiness. So I'm going to m take the smoothing up a pretty good bit until most of that texture is gone and you get kind of a smooth line. It's It's got a little bit of a shadow to it, uh, kind of like a 2B pencil would be. But you see I've got a bit of a sketch there, and I think that looks pretty good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is say, OK. And there I've got this uh, kind of like a sketch going. Now it's set up on default, and default is not transparent. So I want to change the composite method to either gel or multiply. If you're planning on going into Photoshop to do anything, change it to multiply because it won't get lost there. But if you're staying in Painter like I am, just change it to gel. Now you can see that we've got this drawing that kind of helps with our watercolor. And I'm going to take the opacity of the drawing down considerably. Now, I would have probably done a lot of this by hand myself, but like I said in the beginning, I wanted to kind of show this the simplest way um, and the way that, uh, you know, a beginner might try to work with watercolor, except you wouldn't normally do channels and all that. Okay, now this looks pretty good, but it's kind of washed out. So I'm going to come down to this layer, take off the uh, lock, and I'm going to duplicate the layer. And that pops it, uh, gives it a nice look. I don't know if another duplicate layer would do all right. That's getting kind of dark, but I still like it. I think I would take that one and just drop the, the opacity of it about halfway, maybe three quarters. And that, I think, is a, a pretty good area there. Now, if I come here and unlock that, if I duplicate that layer, it gives me a little bit more uh, color in those areas. I don't like the gray so much, but it's all right. Now, I'm going to drop that one about 50%, and I think that looks pretty good. Okay, boys and girls, I think we finished with this one. Um, this gives you an idea of how you can auto paint, and I really didn't do any real painting on it except to bring back some of that center stuff, but this shows you how you can auto paint with watercolors, but utilizing your opacity slider, and if you create a couple of channels, it'll make your life a much, much simpler. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.